Hi, welcome back. We are starting on a new project and uh, we're going to be building an electric bike out of this uh, this old women's Schwinn. So we had picked this one up on uh, the old marketplace and uh, paid 10 bucks for it. It's, it's in uh, pretty good shape, but yeah, these old women's Schwinn bikes, they just Unfortunately, they don't hold their value, and uh, it's mainly because uh, women took care of their stuff, and thus they all survived, and there's a lot of them. Uh, the men's bikes, on the other hand, were just destroyed because that's, I guess, what we do. So there's less of them, and so it, really this is just a good candidate for, uh, for building something out of. And uh, to convert this to an e-bike, um, we're not going down the traditional road of just strapping a motor, a battery pack, and some doodads to it. In fact, uh, there's probably very little on this bike that uh, we're going to end up using. So the idea with this is that we're going to do hubless wheels, so we're going to get rid of all the spokes and then do a carrier system to let the, the bike roll through and then um, dual swing arms so it'll have full suspension. So we'll try to use as much of it as possible. So we, we might reuse some of the brakes, the steering neck here. We, we might reuse some of that stuff. I think where, uh, where I wanna start with this build is up at the front wheel here and build out a wheel and prove that that concept works before we, we really get in and build from the ground up. I guess we are building from the ground up with the wheels first, so that's what we're gonna do. Tires are uh, pretty well dry rotted. Ooh, they're Kendas. Cracked Kendas. Very cracked. But let's get these tires off. Changing car tires was as easy as bikes. That would be pretty fantastic. All right, so then for this idea, we also want to uh, get these spokes out of here. So it turns out the fastest way to get all the spokes that are rusted in out is just rip it around with an angle grinder. And then you get one of these really cool looking uh, head scratcher things. But yeah, probably wouldn't recommend doing that. These are pretty sharp. But uh, yeah. Alright, so now that we have this cleaned up, uh, this should... Uh, Give us a starting point. To make the inside ring for our wheel, we're using this piece of uh, one inch steel tubing and uh, we need to roll it. Um, so we had made this uh, uh, a homemade tubing roller. Let me bring it in here and show you what it, what it is, how it works. All right, so to load this piece of steel in, just lift it up. Slide it through. We'll start it out with a corner turn and start rolling. 
Alright, so then once we get to one end, then we can tighten it down. Uh, let's say that's a quarter turn. And roll it back the other way. So even with about five five rolls back and forth, you can already see that it's starting to get some slope into it. Bending uh, steel tubes on a roller is not the easiest work. I mean, you really, you could probably skip uh, arm days, leg days, back days, finger days at the gym and just start bending some tubes and, man, this is, it's not easy. Well, we're trying to hit uh, 22 and 5 a's on the outside for this, and uh, we're at 28 and a half. So, a bit to go yet. So, we have our outside at 22 and 5 a's, which is what we're looking for. After we have our our tube rolled out, we, we do have some issues because uh, as the, the tube roller bends around, it doesn't fully roll everything. So you can see here that it's, you know, I got a, a flat section, a flat section, and then right here it's dimpled in, and then it's not quite as round as the rest of it. So just because of where the stop and start points are, I'm not able to complete a full circle on this uh, this roller. So what we're gonna do is, eh, I believe that's our rounded section there. It starts about right. Really, it's the same distance from there to there. And that should give us an idea. So, like there. And in theory, it's there. Then we'll cut the tube there. All right, so we have our wheel set up on the flattest surface that I can find, which is this board here. And then the one section of wheel is spaced off to give me just over a 16th gap in between the tube and the rim here. And that's just basically for fine tuning. Um, so we don't want it to be size on size because we're not actually gonna weld this tube to the, the rim. So we wanna leave some gap there. And then we took our other tube here. Just kinda getting an idea and spacing it about what we think it'll be over there. cut off this tube. And so uh, just with dumb luck, our uh, first cut actually fits really well. So I think at this point we can uh, just tack this together. All right, now that we have uh, all of our holes drilled, I'm gonna mark this just in case for some reason it's not perfectly symmetrical. It should be pretty close, but sometimes uh, it's probably not. So 
now what we're going to do is take all of these holes that we had drilled, turn around the outside here, and then open them up big enough to fit a Rivna. So we got our four uh, riv nuts in there, and now we're just going to line up with where, there we go, Over there and there, to center we had standing up so but then what we'll do is we'll just space these out clean them up a little bit and that should be our uh, our wheel shape all right so uh, we have the structure of the wheel built and it seems pretty good uh, but we did run into an issue that yeah I kind of overlooked in the, the CAD modeling part and that is the valve stem. So the valve stem needs to come up through this hole here. But the problem is, is that it hits this tube here. And we can't have the valve stem sticking out past here because our rollers are gonna run through here. So we're gonna come up with another solution. So before we move on with the rest of the wheel here, I do want to see how well this uh, this rusty rim is going to clean up. So we're just going to try some WD-40 in, uh, what is this, Scotch-Brite red? Let's see how that turns out. Looks like uh, it is pitted and uh, the chrome doesn't have much of a shine anymore, but it looks like the vast majority of it is coming off. A couple of minutes with uh, the Scotch Brite and some WD 40 cleaned up pretty nice. So, we do want to try to save this part because we're going to try to reuse it. And this is stuck on, so a little bit of heat. start uh, burning some parts together.
here we have the the bottom part of the uh, the rear swing arm clamped up and we're just gonna tack everything together in case uh, something is fundamentally wrong or it just doesn't look right it's much easier to uh, cut it apart later Alright, so we have the lower section of the swing arm kind of laid out approximately where we think it's going to go. And then our center guide for our wheel is just kind of placed in there. So what we're going to do is try to figure out the top end of our rear swing arm. I think we're going to go with uh, 15 and a half. is an old uh, prototype um, that I made years ago and uh, I think we can take the, uh, the shocks out of here and use them for our bike project. See, that's the thing is even when projects uh, are kind of dead they kind of just get used in other projects. Great, so we got some shocks. Off camera, we, uh, we got the frame all tacked together, and I think that's about where we want it. We got the swing arm here tacked together, and the inside of the rear guide wheel, and uh, just all kind of tacked together. So I think at this point, this pivots, this is the rear swing arm, kind of think how, how I like it. Uh, but we're ready to mount the back wheel here. So to do that, we need to unbolt this guy again. All right, now we can slide our wheel in. So for each wheel, we have six rollers in three sets. So what we do is have these little quarter inch plates, and then we're gonna run a quarter 20 bolt right up through there. And then we're just using a little washer as our standoff. And then these are our nylon rollers that have uh, the pushed in ball bearings on each side. Slide that guy on. And then we'll tighten down one side. And then uh, just leave the other side loose so that we can get it on over the wheel here. Slides over there.
uh, set up here and we're just kind of checking over everything just to kind of get an idea of how it's actually laying out. So I'd like to throw the handlebars on. So these are the original bars and I think what we're going to do is flip them upside down and that'll give it more of that board track look. I don't know. We'll see. That's easy enough to change out. So that will go something like that. And then our front wheel, something like that. And I think that'll look pretty cool. Originally when I drew up uh, this all in the, the CAD model, uh, we, we end up having the swing arm for the front coming off the bottom section similar to how the back is. But then after getting into it, having everything set up, I thought it would probably actually look better to have it come off the top. Um, so instead of doing computer-aided drafting or design, now we're doing CAD with cardboard. So I think what we're gonna do is switch it to the top and have our steel brackets pivot here with our swing arm coming out here and going up there and I think that'll look better. So to make the bushings for the front suspension and the, uh, the guide wheels we're using bars of nylon 6.6. It machines really well and it holds up to friction really well. So all of our rollers are all turned down off of the lathe and uh, now we can just put some bearings in there. We will have to pop these back out when um, uh, we get ready to fully assemble because we still have to cut steel tubes that slide in there that keep these from crushing down. But I don't have the material right now so we're just going to jump ahead. our front swing arm uh, we want both to be pretty much the same so what I did is tacked both the tubes together and then started doing our cuts to get it to bend that way they'll bend pretty much the same to 
to get a little tight. So after spending some time on the uh, thinking bucket, uh, this is what we came up with. So it's uh, kind of a convoluted mess of bracketry, but I think it'll uh, work. It doesn't have the, the best to it, but I think it'll work just fine. Well, I think that looks pretty good. MX-5 
X350 seat that I pulled off of uh, another project. And I think if we spin it around backwards, uh, we'll probably take the plastic off here. Yeah, we'll probably take the plastic off here. And uh, we'll be able to reuse this seat in its reverse position. We might end up reshaping the front of it slightly, but uh, I think that'll be cool. We do have to modify the inside a bit a bit, but let's pull this plastic off and see, uh, trim this off too and see how well it fits on there. I do want to cut this off too. So we have the seat just temporarily held in place and I like the profile look on it. Except for I don't like the squared off front of it. So I think what we're going to do, if we add in, not a piece of wood, but something tapered to extend that out, I think that'll look better. So we have the, the steering all figured out, all the suspension figured out, the wheels all spin. Uh, we got the seat on here. You have to do some finishing touches on it, but... Um, we still have yet to uh, do all of our brakes, build our battery box, wire in our motor, place the motor, and then place the, the drive mechanism for the rear wheel here, which we haven't figured any of that stuff out yet, but uh, I think we're at a pretty good point. Um, we still need to order up some electronics to, before we can uh, get started on that part. If you like this build so far, uh, please subscribe, hit that bell button, and uh, you'll be notified of when the next video is coming out. So until next time, thanks for watching and take care.